Today's guest is artist Eric Wilkerson. Eric has quite an illustrious career as an illustrator. He has won a Chelsea, collaborated with names like Disney, Marvel, and Colin Kaepernick. He even debuted in Magic last year as an artist. That is, if you do not count his likeness in a Rise of the Eldrazi rare. Which card is it? Here's a hint. Enjoy the interview. Well, thank you for taking the time to join me tonight. Thank you for having me. This is uh, I'm a, quite an honor. I'm uh, I'm actually surprised that you you reached out because I haven't had a lot <laughs> come out. <laughs> well, so uh, I technically only have one card out there in the wild, but uh, a bunch just sitting in my garage waiting to be revealed. So well, that right um, up, right away that gives me the information that I was curious about. I, I assumed it was going to be that you were going to be following it up with it, but now now you've confirmed that for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I I I started doing uh, cards last year, beginning of last year. And um, you know, I never really assume that they're going to call me back after I do one uh, or, or, you know, a couple. So I always just book the next thing, never really thinking, oh, well, if you just give it a minute, they'll call you back. They'll, you know, they don't, they didn't hate what you gave them. So, right. Um, but juggling everything, trying to, accept as much uh, freelance work that I enjoy as possible. And then um, trying to squeeze it all into the tiny amount of time I have per day uh, is, is a challenge, but you know, who needs sleep? (laughs) What would, what would you say if you had to just, what is, what is art, the, the illustrations that you really enjoy? What, what, how would you describe that? Oh gosh. Um, how would I describe it? How would I describe what I do? Um, well, I think over the past um, past couple of years, I've had a real focus on um, uh, including more people of color in my art, in my sci-fi fantasy illustration, and uh, really trying to be more representative of uh, you know, um, of that diversity or inclusion and inclusion in, in the, in the art form. Um, if you wanted a quick soundbite, I'd probably just say, I paint black folks having sci-fi fantasy adventures <laughs> you know, or something like that. That works. But, uh, um, but that, that's, that has been what numerous companies have wanted surprisingly um and i'm i'm happy to give it now when you say surprisingly so there has been a shift at least from from what i understand and what i can tell there that things seem to be moving forward at least in fantasy art where there is more um inclusion um when did you notice that starting to really change um honestly i mean okay so it's a let's 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 roll back okay Um, because comic books traditionally have been more inclusive i mean i know that that might sound weird to say because you're like well there's only one black guy there's only one person of color in every one of those marvel teams or whatever but they're there yeah that means something that means something to somebody like i grew up reading x-men seeing bishop in x-men and be like whoa 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 he looked from the future and he's coming back to kill the x-men like what that was that was a big deal with the dripping jerry curl and everything but um but when you look to when you look outside of comics well as it when i was a kid you know 30 years ago when you looked outside of comics you look at the book covers you look at the role play games and all that stuff, there wasn't much at all. There was no representation of anybody, um, any person of color uh, in in that art form. And it kind of lets you know who that audience, who who they're, you know, what the audience, who the audience is that they're catering to, right? Mm-hmm. And so I stayed over in comics. I'm like, all right, well, they're letting me know that 
they don't want my money, or they're letting me know that I don't exist in that world. So why should I try to play that game or read this thing or whatever? Um, but I'd say over the past maybe five years or so, it's things have really ticked up a lot. I mean, you might sporadically see a, a book cover or, or something with uh, um, like a black woman or something like that on it, uh, you know, 10 years or so ago, but it was rare. Then Black Panther wins, uh, earns a billion dollars at the box office. And then all these other companies are like, well, maybe, you know, <laughs> yeah. maybe they do want to see themselves represented right. in this art form. <laughs> maybe really? tapping into an entire race would be good. Or maybe, you know, yeah, like tapping into an, un, you know, like a whole demographic that you are ignored. Right. right. So like there are plenty of authors out there. There are plenty of 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 people that go to these conventions. You go to Dragon Con and the world is at Dragon Con. You know, you go to San Diego Comic Con, the world is at Dragon Con. I was San Diego Comic Con. And they're all thirsty. They're all hungry for all of that pop culture content. And if you let the audience know that they exist in your you know, your imaginary world that you, you know, you're blasting out on the internet, you know, and into Netflix or whatever, uh, they'll come and they'll, they'll support it. Right. So, yeah. It's, you know. it's, it's amazing. It seems like this whole, this whole thing sort of is happening across a lot of different types of entertainment too, because for me as a horror fan, when Get Out came out and that, that changed horror for everybody, but not just that, it got, it got an Oscar, which gave horror respectability. And now all of a sudden, you know, that's happening. So it's, it's some, there's some synchronicity there, but what I'm curious about, and I, I'd heard you mentioned this in some interviews. Now, when you were starting out, well, first, you, when you started out, I believe you were um, under Donato Giancola, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, I studied with Donato in my uh, third, going into my fourth year of college. And, uh, you know, that was like before there was a master class. <laughs> right. Know, before all that stuff, it was, oh, well, yeah, let's sign up and take this class with this dude. and. Uh, I mean, everything that came out of his mouth was gold. I wrote it all down. <laughs> so did you know who, did you know that who he was, who he was when you took the class or were you just sort of not aware? I know I was, I was aware mainly because the head, the president of the society of illustrators at the time, uh, cause I, I, I studied at the school of visual arts in New York city and the head of the president of the society of illustrators was teaching our history of illustration course. So he introduced us to all the golden age illustrators, all the, you know, contemporary people, and then dipped into the sci-fi fantasy stuff and was introducing us to the work of Whalen, Donato, you know, Matt Stalwicky, uh, you know, the Yule brothers, all of those people. And it was blowing my mind. And he, he kind of told me, okay, well, some of their work is in, um, our members only, you know, exhibition, come, come take a look at that stuff. Ooh. And I mean, it was like walking distance. The site of illustrators was, you know, subway rider. So uh, away from the school, just head over there and you can just go stare at, you know, the, their original wow. paintings. And uh, the, the, the president of the society said, you know, that Donato actually teaches in the, um, he, uh, he teaches at the school. I think it was like a night class or something. And I thought, okay, well, they actually had a course for sci-fi illustration, a whole course for it. And I thought, I can't leave this school. I can't graduate from this school before taking a class with somebody that knows what they're talking about because there was a lot of other instructors that were just like, yeah, well, this is how you compose a piece, but they weren't specifically talking to what I actually wanted to do. You know, they were editorial illustrators that became teachers. 
Mm -hmm. right? Portrait painters that became illustration teachers. They weren't really saying, okay, well, if you're going to have a giant monster with a glowing chest and metal arms, and (laughs) this is how you light it. This is how you construct the piece. And this is how you create a sense of narrative around that character. You go, oh, okay. (laughs) That's great. And then he said to you, I believe that he said to you before you were getting ready to graduate, he said, you know, when you leave here, I'm going to be your competition. Yeah, that messed me up. I, I was not, nobody's ready for that. You know, you're sitting there watching somebody paint a demo and then we're like giggling and like cracking jokes because he's painting hands and you go like, well, how many times have you done that before? Or something like that. Something stupid rolled out my mouth, right? Right. And he turns to me, like not, didn't miss a beat, just dry. Like, you know, when you graduate, I'm your direct competition. I'm like, oh, God, that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Oh man, and I interviewed him, and I can tell you he's he is he's got that like sort of just like that master teacher quality about him. Yes, yes, and it was the 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 best experience of my uh, college, uh, you know, uh, education. And um, me and a friend of mine, we liked the class so much that we took it twice. Really. So, well, yeah, because like the first time I took it was in the summer of my third year. And that's where I met uh, Matt Stewart. So me and Matt Stewart met in his class. Oh, wow. And, you know, Matt was putting together was just like the start, like putting together his portfolio. He hadn't even done any of the the real like hardcore Tolkien stuff that he's kind of known for now. But uh, we were both trying to find our, our footing and figure out what we wanted to do. Um, and I think the second class, uh, the second time I took it was in the fall of my senior year. And we had a number of like heavy hitters. It's just like, you know, everybody was trying to impress him, right? You don't come into that class and do bad work. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like you want to make it, you, cause there was this feeling like, he could be home right now painting some wraparound or something. Right. Or some epic piece, but he's here talking to us. Like, let's make it worth his time. At least that's how I thought about it. You know? That seems like a smart decision to 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 have made, I feel. Um, you yeah. know, I don't nobody wants to like sort of like doodle in front of Donato Giancola for sure. Um, but one thing that you mentioned and said that that, that that really struck me, I never, you know, I don't think about these kind of things because they're outside of my worldview and it's, I try to be open, but you know, there's only so far this noodle goes, but um, you had talked about how in a lot of like illustration courses, they only teach to painting white skin and, and not really showing anything like that. Now that blows my mind and how how did you learn to to I go against that? Where were the ways that you found ways to like learn how to paint skin that was you know browner than what popular was popularly was being taught? Well, uh, I mean, I I really had to teach myself because like all the models that we were practicing with, all like studying from in our live painting sessions were all white. So like mm-hmm. you weren't you weren't going to get that opportunity unless you sought you know. You, unless you just painted yourself or uh, they gathered different photo reference or something like that. But I, I studied a, a way of painting. Uh, I was taught a way of painting that um, allows me to pre-mix my, my colors, my skin, my flesh tones, uh, according to a numeric value structure. So from light to dark. And Um, once I understood that mathematic structure of how to oil paint, it was just a simple process of taking the numeric structure of how to paint white flesh, which is like a value nine to value six or value five in the shadow to just moving it, ticking it down a couple of notches and saying, okay, well, the flesh tone is instead of it, the highlights being a value nine, the highlights are now going to be a value seven and everything's going to tick down depending on how dark the complexion is, it's going to go from, you know, a value, maybe a value six in the highlight to a value two being close to black or dark. So it's, it's similar to, I mean, if you've ever seen James Gurney's palette, 
Mm -hmm. James Gurney kind of works the exact same way I do. But instead of there being a nine value structure, he's reduced it down to a five value structure. Uh, it's, I could nerd out on you. and That's great. I mean, you have Photoshop in your head. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, this was, this is before this way of painting started. It's uh, based on the way a painter from the Art Students League named Frank Riley taught. So if you're familiar with like illustrators like Dan Horn, mm -hmm. um, sci like sci-fi guys like that, uh, James Gurney, um, there's a couple of other people I can't think of off the top of my head, but these are people that understand painting based on the teachings of Frank Riley. And, you know, you pre-mix your palette, you've got your a numeric structure so that as you're painting, you understand it's like painting becomes more like cooking. I see. Okay. Right. So instead of you just haphazardly squeezing stuff out onto a palette and, you know, wiggling your brush around, trying to nail that color every single time I understand, all right, that is a value five blue. It is made up of Prussian blue, you know, this color, this color, and this color, plus a, uh, a gray tone uh, equivalent to neutralize the chroma or the neutralize the, the, the saturation of that color. Um, but that's like, it's, it's so technical. It's like sit here and talk about that stuff. But I, I mean, anyway, it's not to, it's interesting to me. I mean, because the, these are the things that you don't necessarily get to hear from yeah. artists. You don't, well, you don't get to hear from a lot of artists in general, but, but it, the behind the scenes stuff is fascinating to me, but yeah. um, it's, it's cool that this is sort of your breaking down how you learned how to paint the skin tones that were brown. Yeah. This you were asking right. questions. So, so for me, it was just a numeric value shift. I wasn't thinking, okay, well, I have, let me, what colors do I use? Do I use a brown? Do I use this or do I use that? It was just understanding here's how I mix flesh for any race. I'm just going to shift it down. Now, what was the first, like, what would you say one of your bigger, like, because I know that I've read that you've done a lot of stuff for commercials and stuff like that. Uh, what would you say one of your first big jobs was when, you know, you finished with school? Oh. Um, I'd say, I mean, I, I did a number of big jobs. I'd say the one that I'm probably the most proud of because I, I still can't believe they chose me is the time that I was working as a concept artist and illustrator for the Blue Man Group. It was a, um, if you, if, you know, if people watching this aren't familiar, it's that theater group where the guys with the blue face paint are like mm -hmm. banging on trash for an hour and a half. Yes, so yes. They, they were going to put out a, uh, a new stage show that was going to be like all sci-fi with like robots and stuff like that. And I was the, like the lead concept artist for that for like four years. Really? So where did you, did you have to relocate? Cause are they, were they in Vegas? No, they were in New York. They were in New York city. So I would, I worked from home, but I was, um, you know, commuting in working directly with the, the founders of the company to create this show. And the, the cool, the hot, the, the biggest highlight for still probably to my, uh, for my career has been when it's see for like most concept art, when you're thinking of concept, concept design or costume design, uh, the concept artist is drawing something that then gets sculpted in ZBrush or animated for some game or something like that. But I had to design costumes that had to be fabricated and, you know, worn by actors. Right. And, but it, it couldn't feel like some rubbery, uh, you know, theme park looking cheesy thing. It had to look believable, like fiberglass kind of, you don't, you can't tell that there's a human being in that. Right. Costume kind of, kind of look, it's gotta be very high end. And they commissioned what a workshop uh, in New Zealand to to fabricate my designs. So that's awesome. Like I'd be going to meetings and we'd be on 
uh, Skype calls with New Zealand and they'd be showing us videos of them like sculpting my stuff. And they'd have like curtains in the background, like covering all of their Hobbit armor and right. like, Hobbit designs. Because the like NDA that. and stuff, right? All of that. And I would tease them and be like, your, your, your curtain fell. <laughs> I'm seeing everything. Screenshot, screenshot. Yeah. And they'd quickly like do one of those. But um, that was like, that was the best. And then they shipped, then they shipped one of the costumes to New York, to New York City. And we had this whole like proof of concept uh, conference where we had an actor in the costume like for a fitting and everything and all of the illumination and all the visuals and monitors and stuff like that on the, on the body. But uh, there's even a photo of me wearing part of the costume, like on my Instagram. And uh, like, that was for me, probably like the best, like single experience, right? Because at the end of that time, we had a whole cast of uh, like robot costumes and it just looked beautiful. But what was that like to see? Did you, when the first time you saw it on stage was that must've been mind blowing? It, you know what? It never made it to stage. It didn't? It, it never. I mean, if it, if it had, you didn't, you'd know about it because oh, it'd be no. everywhere. It, like, what happened? The, the uh, I can't, I don't know exactly what happened. All I know is that after four years of my time and effort, they decided to cancel the project. I think that Cirque du Soleil, if you're familiar with Cirque mm -hmm. du Soleil, ended up buying the Blue Man Group. And then oh. that project got, it's kind of like, you know, when Disney buys a company, they're like, why are we yeah. spending money on this? Yeah. Cancel it the new suits come in and they have their priorities and then the old projects are seen as not uh, right. relevant, which is so shitty. Right. So somewhere, somewhere in the world, somewhere in New York, somewhere in Las Vegas, there are six gigantic, maybe five foot high metal crates, you know, for like speaker equipment and stuff like that, but they are padded and filled with the robotic costumes that nobody will ever see. Oh, that's yeah. No, they can't share them, right? Because they're they're that's proprietary, right? They, they own that, so it's a they own it. They oh, own it. right. In the so night. it's like Ark of the Covenant in the big warehouse at the end. Like that was the end result of four years of my life. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, so, that that ended in a way I did not anticipate. I was like, yeah, going, building instantly up, building turned up. me off of wanting to be a full time concept artist. After that, I'm like, wait, so I could do all this, and then nobody could potentially ever see it right oh man it's like sort of just like sitting in a dark room you're just like but you as a as a as a commercial illustrator commercial artist you have to especially as a concept artist you have to be okay with that you know you got paid that's mm -hmm. well, that's, yeah. that's that's your only takeaway is that you got paid for your time Right. Because if because, you know, if the video game or the movie or whatever it is you're working on gets canceled, um, I guess at some point you can show your portfolio. You can show that work if you get permission. But otherwise, nobody will ever know that, you know, what you've been doing with years of your of your life. Have you have you requested? Have you written anybody and said, hey, you know, I'd everybody that was there at the time. Uh, moved on so all of the production people all of the even the found one of the founders they all they once they sold the company they all scattered so there's nobody to even email and say hey um but it's it's been like 10 years it's been over 10 years now so wow i mean i'm sure it's fine to for me to post my portion of it yeah i can yeah. post my stuff but i kind of felt like why you know? well, I mean, because it's a, I mean, it's your career has is, um, you know, right now it's, I mean, it's, it's going very well for you. You're becoming somebody of note. It's, it's important to share that kind of stuff, especially if it's a significant experience for you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I went up to a couple of the, um, 
people that I had spoken with at Weta, I, I went up to them at San Diego Comic-Con and kind of had to jog their memory <clears throat> and like, well, you know, we worked on this together and the, the, the robot thing. And they had to really think about it because I imagine they, they work on, they work on so many different projects for so right. many different clients. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, like a <laughs> robot, yeah. you say? <laughs> oh, that little thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Before we went on and did the Hobbit for a couple of years, I remember that. Like, oh God. So. Oh, that's that's well. I mean, if there's any any way you want to share it, I would love to see it because I'm I've got this great like I've got this great vision of what it is. I mean, so yeah, you got it. You got to share it now, just just because it's. Yeah, I mean, I I figured I would probably post post it eventually on Instagram and do like one of those flashback. Thursday, what do you call it? Flashback. Throwback thing, Thursday. Throwback Thursday. Yeah. Things like here's when I thought I wanted to be a full time concept artist. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, that's funny. But. And well, you but you you well you've done concept art. And one thing that I found uh, pretty cool, uh, and I didn't realize this until doing some of my research, is that you also are an Echo Mage uh, as well. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. I was hoping that you that you that you uh check in on that if i ever do one of those grand prix or if i ever get invited to be an artist guest at one of those magic events i'm coming in full cosplay i don't care you have to because people i mean god people are in like i don't want to like trash anybody but like on the internet they're like it's dmx i'm like what like you don't even have to sing cheekbones and so when you were like and when i read like i saw that and, and I, I was like wait a minute and I just saw that I was like, and I was looking up on Matt's page and he's like a friend of mine. And I was like, oh, please let it be him. <laughs> please let it yep. be him. Yep. And it was you. Yeah. I've, I've, uh, I've had the honor of being in a couple of different magic cards before I was doing them. Um, like I had friends that, uh, that I've met over the years that have been doing magic for like uh, over a decade. And uh, I was just kind of like, well, Hey, if you ever need a model, let me know. So I've been in, I think, been in Matt's work, I think maybe three times. And then Scott Murphy painted me um, for a card last year. Um, I actually got it. Well, I don't have the original. I've got the, um, oh man. Where is it? I had the poster. The way you, if you need time to look for it, I'm like we can always cut, you know, cut. Oh, oh, here it is. So it's uh sergeant at arms. I don't know if you could see this. Uh that's one. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I got the card on the back. So yeah. So I mean he lives in a different state from me, but he told me what he needed, sent me a sketch um and like a rough description of what he needed and i just like set up my my camera and just did a little quick pose for him uh, did, did you do photographs for um for the echo mage as well no i actually drove to matt's house and just stood out in his backyard <laughs> he wasn't that far from me so uh because i was in i was in new york i was living in new york at the time and he was in uh jersey so i figured well i'll drive out give me a chance to see some of his works in person and um because he was working on some really big just giant like dragon paintings at the time and i was just like oh man i, I wish i was doing this this looks so much fun so and then you turned around and did a tribute to him as well. You painted him in one of your paintings. <laughs> yeah, so that was part of our that was part of our deal. I was like, well, I can't afford <laughs> to buy this because uh, I'm not making money. But uh, I'll do you one better. I will paint you if we can do an art trade. And so uh, we went hiking one time, and I had him pose and threw together some some image so that's uh that's that's in his house and i have the echo mage hanging in the in the other room so um 
I was like, really, I'm, I'm really happy about that. That was like an honor. And what's so funny is every, every couple of years, I'll just do a, one of those little quick Google searches and people have done like manga versions of it. Like, like, I, it's like, noticed. It's, I mean, it's a notable, there's, I mean, it's just noticeable, notable. It's sort of like, uh, you just, the, the, he stands out. It, it, it's, it's a tribute to both, uh, you know, Matt's skills and your posing. It's, it, and it really does look a lot like you. It's not like a variation of you. It's, it's right. pretty, it's pretty spot on. Yeah. I told him, can you just like shave five pounds off my face? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I gotcha. So I thought, oh man, that's I was I was so blown away. I said I have to I have to have this. This is so cool. Yeah, you'd get a kick out of it, but there's a whole like Reddit page where people talk about what celebrity they think posed for that. That's, yeah, it was it wasn't DMX. It was no, Kanye. But the, the Kanye, was, which I'm like I don't. I mean, somebody said it looked like DMX. <laughs> yeah, several like no, there's there's like tribute, and I'll post them here. There's like tribute images. Somebody like juxtaposed the picture next to DMX, and like it, it's it's like these people are I. Hate to break it to them but like they're really convinced they've discovered like this brilliant thing and, and i'm thinking like no no wow uh, my, my my voice isn't dm uh, isn't deep enough to ever <laughs> ever impersonate yeah. like i would go go dressed as echo mage and they'll think wow, wow we we thought you would be taller with a deeper <laughs> voice like, yeah it's like was dmx tall though i don't was he tall oh i i have no idea no idea but, yeah, that's, but he had that's that pretty funny he had that like shards of glass in his throat kind of voice yeah that rasp so yep. i could never mimic that so well you could maybe like put like your you know smoke a pack of cigarettes in 15 minutes and maybe drink like oh yeah rubbing alcohol and who knows yeah <laughs> you'll, you'll maybe it'll register a little bit deeper pass I mean, out before i reach the convention hall yeah you'll be like hi work. everybody it's <laughs> just pass Boom. out um, so one of the pieces that you did that that it got a lot of uh, notice is um, now I don't know and is it the Oba? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that was one of your personal pieces, right? Correct. It was unpublished. Yep. And yep. you said that it was sort of a gesticulation of a bunch of things that you had been working on uh, for yourself over the years. How? Do, what do you mean by that? Well. Um going back to what we were originally talking about, how I wasn't seeing um, that inclusion in sci-fi fantasy art um, growing up, I became kind of, I had just kind of given up on the idea that I was ever going to work for certain clients and just accepted that I'm going to have to, because like I wasn't getting the kind of work that I enjoyed doing. Right. And so at a certain point, things just really slowed down to a crawl. And I'm thinking, all right, well, it's not just me anymore. I have to help support a family. So I have to go out and try to find a job doing anything else. And I'll just paint in my spare time. And that's where I was at the point where I painted that piece. Um, kind of just thinking, OK, well, if I'm going to leave this as a as a career choice, I'm going to paint something for myself that nobody, no art director at tour, no art director anywhere was ever going to ask me to do. And so that's what, that's what came out of me. And uh, like, I, I tell my students, I tell, uh, well, I've given lectures where <clears throat> now um, at different conventions where I talk about the, um, and it might sound like, hallmark after school special kind of kind of thing but it's the idea of not giving up on on your goals on your dreams because uh it only really takes one image uh and it's being seen by the right person to change the trajectory of your life and, and yeah and it did because and it and i also read that it had to do um it kind of was a, a it happened uh it was a sort of a, a like a discharge of of your mother passing and and i'd imagine all of those emotions just sort of were well yeah i mean it's like everything it's it was and it was what i didn't time it for it to come out around the exact same time that black panther was in theaters That's but it just that's kind of happened. 
I mean, fortuitous, right? right? It, it it really was. It's it's kind of like, kind of like um, Dinotopia hitting store shelves the exact same summer the Jurassic Park. Yeah. Is in theaters. So when people were walking out of the movie theater, they walk into Barnes Noble or Walden books at the time and go, what the hell is this? Yeah. Right. Oh, I got $20. And, then, you know, I, my kids love dinosaurs. I got to, you know, yeah, Done. that's, that's right? crazy. That's like, and so that there you go. I mean, and it's it, what's great. And then also that sort of ties into what ended up being your first card for magic was the secret layer. It's like, it's just so cool. Like uh, to, to think that like you're, your whole like the the whole part that you had sort of you know given up on or thought that was never going to be something that you were going to be able to have a voice with became a primary voice for you yeah and i mean i just i just remember you know you you look at the when i was looking at a lot of illustrators a lot of illustration growing up um there just seemed to be this rule almost even in some artists personal works like well they're not putting any person of color in their work unless they're being asked to do so unless they're being paid to do so and and that was very rare so um when i was putting together my portfolio i just figured like okay well I probably shouldn't put anybody in my art that looks like me if I'm trying to get work from certain, certain, you know, certain publishers, uh, cause I don't want to scare them away. I don't want them thinking, well, well, all he's going to give us is right. Um, I wanted to let them know, no, I can paint everybody and I'll can paint whatever you want me to paint, but I wasn't trying to cram it down their throat and say, well, you will accept a portfolio full of black faces, right? (laughs) Take that. Um, And uh, so that was, you know, almost 20 years of my career was just doing something else. And, uh, you know, having, having publishers come to me now and say, "Um, we saw this image on your website can you do that for us? I go, really? Wow. Okay. It's, it's, is it now? I mean, it, it's a, it's a really like, at least in this instance, this is a positive step forward for inclusion. I feel like th- that the way that your story is coming out is it's actually just something that like feels like it, it happened because it should have not because there was some sort of, you know, political or anything like that. It just seemed like a right. natural kind of movement towards it. It was time. It was yes. time because the demographics in the country are changing. Demographics in the world are changing. The, the, the people that they can't, you can't deny the, the wide range of people that are into this medium, into this genre and to, you know, treat the artwork and to treat, treat, you know, treat it like, it's still 1985. Well, going back to what you were saying, uh, it's it's really kind of, a, it's almost embarrassing to think about the fact that they were willing to ignore this, these ma- markets and markets of people uh, simply because of an old sort of just, just wrong way of viewing things. I mean, people, I mean, of course, everybody, everybody is into fantasy. It's fantasy. We, we human beings like to fantasize. Right. So, I mean, it's, you know, I, I can't, I can't, I can't tell you why uh, things are the way they are, but it's, it, you know, it's interesting how you can look at certain publishers even today and know that from what they put out into the world, that they have no interest in being more inclusive with the kind of content that they produce. And that, that's fine. They're right. Are you but, able to tell when it's versus racism versus being sort of say myopic and people are just sort of like, you know, not thinking that because it's just it's th- because people are sort of, you know, navel gazers by nature. Are you able to differentiate that when you have to deal with that kind of thing? When I I mean, it's hard. It's hard to try to gauge who it's safe to send your portfolio to hmm. whether or not they're going to 
immediately go, well, this isn't what we do. Or if they're going to embrace it and say, okay, well, you, you can clearly paint what we do, but you know, we would just change this or change that. Um, there, there is a, um, a poll, not a, I guess not a poll, but a, it's a survey that is done either annually or um, every other year where um, like children's book publishers put out a, a, a survey that shows what the percentage of different races of children that are they're depicted in children's books. And um, so children's book publishers uh, across the planet have been going out of their way to try to be more inclusive and push and, and show kids everywhere. Like you matter, you know, uh, from native American, Asian, all kinds, you know, you matter here. You are represented in this book, whether it's a middle grade, whether it's a children's book, uh, you know, aimed at little kids, but, um, it's something that is, it's a still a slow burn for the adult sci-fi fantasy line. And it's, it's kind of hard to kind of figure out where do you take a portfolio like mine uh, outside of comic books, right? So. <laughs> and, but what you did end up, you did end up becoming involved with the, the younger audiences as far as your artwork goes you you had great acclaim on both the book covers that you did and then now i from what i understand is i i'm assuming it's finished the the book with colin kaepernick yeah yeah so that yeah so that that's finished and uh that'll be in stores in april now, so did yeah. how did that come how well i'm well i'm we'll get to magic eventually but how did yeah. that happen? like did you know like lo and behold he, the guy has a career uh but so how how did that go down does like uh did somebody call you or did, how did that how did that meeting happen so um so after doing the the first tristan strong book for disney uh that got the um the chesley award um it kind of like launched a lot of stuff. So Scholastic saw my work after the Disney stuff was happening and brought me on to do uh, a series for Shuri for Black Panther, which was really surreal because like a year prior, I was watching or two years prior, I'm watching this in the movie theater going, oh, this is so awesome. I would love to work on this one day or like, you know, be a part of the sequel in some way or another. Oh, wow. And then, then to be kind of really given free reign to design what Shuri looks like on the cover of these books. So I already had a relationship uh, established with uh, Scholastic. And um, when Colin was looking for um, illustrators, uh, he was specifically looking for uh, black illustrators that could do like a stylized realism uh, kind of look, something similar to what uh, either um, just like something some, not too cartoony, not too graphic. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, so Colin had reached out to Scholastic. Scholastic reached out to my agent, basically asking if I was interested and if, and if I was available. They didn't tell me who the celebrity was. They just yeah. said, "Wow, here's a this is a celebrity book. Here's how much it pays. Um, this is what the story might be about. Are you interested? And if you say yes, then we can tell you who it is. And my wife and I had just like literally maybe you had been in our new house for like a week or two when this email came through and I'm thinking we're like, we're trying to paint walls and get everything together. And like, we're, she's coming out of home Depot and I get this email and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this is too huge to say no to. Yeah. Like you don't like, illustrators work their whole lives to have some celebrity go. Yeah. This is the person we want. 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. To turn that down would have felt stupid. So I, so I, you know, we talked about it and I said, okay, well, this is going to mean a lot of late nights. Um, this is like the, the deadline's kind of tight. So it's a lot of work. Won't be much wall painting. Right. So, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I didn't finish unpacking until somewhere around mid August. I mean, we, I got that email in the beginning of end of February, early March. Yeah. Early March. And so I did a test. I had to do a test image just to see if I was truly the one to do this book. And I was super nervous. Like, uh, like I don't, this is so far out of my wheelhouse, right? If you had asked me to like paint a robot or a monster or some kind of something with like multiple light sources and all that stuff, I would have like been like, yeah, okay. When do you need it? But to say, no, draw a little boy, make him cute. <laughs> right. Yeah. And do it multiple times per page uh, for a 40 page children's book. I go, oh, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah. I'll, like, I'll, I'm not going to say no. I'll figure it out. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Literally, I was, that's how it was. I was like, I'll figure it out. And uh, thankfully, I had uh, my daughter, who is roughly the same age as the you know, as Colin is in the book, same, same complexion, uh, same facial structure and all that stuff. So I was like, all right, well, you're going to be my model for this. I'm just going to turn you into a little boy and give you a full Afro. <laughs> did you, did you, um, did you give, like, did you put on like a, like a prop Afro or did you just imagine it? Oh no, my, my, my daughter's hair, like the, the image, uh, for that, that first magic card that's her hair i was gonna i was gonna so, ask is that based off your daughter as well oh it's 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 my yeah so my, the reference for that painting um uh is of my daughter holding like a like a uh a little i i sculpted a little maquette i saw that uh, yes i sculpted a little maquette for this piece and then i also uh, had her just holding a little saucer, a little plate, so that I had something for her fingers to actually tangibly hold. I didn't want her to just be sitting there, standing there in their kitchen like this. Yeah. Right. I wanted her to be holding something. And, but yeah, if we don't put any product in her hair, it's just blown <laughs> out. So it's, um, uh, well, it's, um, I keep mine short because I'm Jewish. So the juice. Juice. <laughs> <never. laughs> This it does it just goes straight up like a, yeah like, like an eraser and so it's it's yeah it's it's out of control um but the the it's 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 that's so wonderful that you sort of and it's it sort of even even almost like a you you kind of had to go that path where you are drawing these things or painting these things that you never thought you would but at the same time secretly you wanted to do yeah yeah and. What I've, what I've discovered from a lot of uh, people that end up working on magic, and I, I think that um, Tyler Walpole had said the same thing, uh, is like when you're out there doing something else, doing what you love, showing that you're you know, consistently good at creating fantasy, creating whatever it is that you do, at some point in time or another, uh, if you've expressed interest, you know, wizards will see that and know that you could handle a, a commission, right? And um, it's different from just throwing any random image at them and going, well, see, I can render, right? <laughs> right. And that's, that's kind of how I had, how I had approached it, Um Many years ago, I was submitting, I, I had you know, shown my stuff to, to Wizards at a New York Comic Con and um, like nothing, nothing ever came of it. But I was really, I was showing comic book samples. I was showing random sci-fi cover samples, I, everything in a vertical format, not showing them and stuff in a horizontal format. And there was always something that was off that led them to think, well, he's not quite there. He's not quite ready. And at the last time that I had put together samples was right before Blue Man Group had contacted me about working with them. So it's like when you're not ready for one company and then another one 
steps in and says, hey, are you available? And then we're going to have your artwork, you know, fabricated by a major visual effects studio. It kind of messes with your brain. You're like, I'm not good enough for you, but I'm good enough for them. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's tricky. That's tricky. <laughs> but it's 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 been it's satisfying to know that it's been satisfying to get the opportunity to to do this work. Right. Because I remember. Donato showing us his cards that he was doing back in college and telling us exactly how to go about, well, here's the art drop. Here's how to submit your stuff when you're ready. And like, you know, you should be doing this. And I'm thinking, I don't, I don't even know what to paint. I wouldn't even know where to begin putting together samples, right? Like what's the aesthetic? Like, what do you, what do you create that's going to uh, draw their attention and it just apparently it just turns out this paint what you love you know there's been a number of illustrators uh that have just painted what they love to do and okay what was that carly i can't remember her name carly mazer there you go she was she was doing stuff like was completely different mm -hmm. visually from anything that had ever been on magic yes yes right? Just and painting it, what she loved to do. And that's the thing. It's like, I feel you're right. That when you do, when you are honest about what it is that you desire to do, it, you get the notice. And I mean, like yeah. the way I see it is like, if people were, people like loved it or hated, it, that's where you kind of want to be almost. You want to be at that point where people are just either loving it or they're outraged because either way they're talking about you. Right, right. And and that's, that's, that's gotta be, that's so satisfying. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. I, when I got the email, um, Zach Stella, uh, one of the art directors, uh, and illustrators for, for magic, he brought me on and I, I, you know, I was on a flight and I like, this is like when the, when the internet kicks back in and you, you know, <laughs> you can check your phone. Yeah. Like, right. Are, is this for real? <laughs> it's like, and check it, I, like, is this a virus? Is this a virus? Is this is this a fake? Right. You, you first, the first you think is this right? Is this a virus? Is this one of those scam emails? Mm -hmm. Oh yes, I'll um, give you my soch. No problem. Right. But it was for real, and I'm like, oh my god. So I and he, he gave he, he gave me a, an opportunity to paint my my daughter, and I thought, well, a I'm never selling it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Even yeah. though I've had people, you know, asking me. Uh, uh, you know, many times, but I'm like never selling it and don't mess up and hit your deadline. <laughs> right. So, wow. Yeah. That would be, um, a, that would be a big disappointment if you had not come through on that one. Right. So um, then after that, I had an opportunity to work with the other, some of the other art directors and doing some uh, sets that they've got coming out, I guess next year. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know. You What's know, that? I, yeah, I I mean I I try to keep track of that kind of Marvel Studios timeline thing that they do. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, when is this happening? <laughs> What's the name of this set again? Yeah, it's but, it's um it's tricky, but uh, we can we can be safe to say that we will see something from you in 2022, right? Yeah. Well, I've got I've got a I've got a card coming out in the next wave of uh, Innistrad. Oh, really? And oh. Uh, with that, my wife is like waiting to see like how that does. Is she is she a model? Is she? I should, well, no. I well, I guess, she kind of modeled for it. She modeled for a little bit of it, but, but I, yeah, I probably shouldn't uh, shouldn't pe 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 pester you for that information with the whole. No, thing. it's okay. It's it's fine. I I haven't like I'm not telling anything but it's true uh, it's uh but yeah i'm i'm excited to to like have that out in the world and um it's it's what's been so fun about working with magic as an oil painter is getting the opportunity to really just throw down and try to hold my own with all the other guys that are out there just killing it, you know, set after set, just, just blowing me away. I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's an oil painting. You just go, oh man, I need to work harder. Right. But that's good. Um, that's good though. Yeah. It, it, it just pushes the, 
the level of quality up consistently, right? Right. And, yeah. Um, well, it's like in but, sports, they always say if you want to be a better sports player, you need to play against somebody who can kick your ass. Right. Yeah. And and so I I I really admire so many uh, so many painters uh, that, that work with the, that work on it. And, um, I promised myself, I promised one of the art directors, uh, that I work with there, uh, on, on magic that I will never send you a digital painting. Like that's, if I can't do it in oils, I'm not going to do it. That's interesting. That's an interesting thing because it's so, it, it is so very personal for everybody, but I, I mean, for, first of all, the, the financial like ramifications of doing it is obviously a big plus, but you had written, and I think this is interesting that you're kind of worried about not doing uh, oils because it's sort of like riding a bike where you, you will, you maybe you wouldn't be so good at it if you took too much time off. Right. And, and to, to have a client you know, give you the time to create a physical object, right? All you got to do is send them a file. So they don't really care one way or the other, you know, which way you do it. But um, like I'm in front of my Cintiq for hours a day, you know, doing digital stuff for other people. Right. So to scrape off my palette, sit there and mix up my values and just attack an oil painting and know that hopefully some collector might want that on their wall one day. Oh, that's, they will. that's satisfying. That's a satisfying feeling to not just do a painting and then go, okay, well into the closet it goes. <laughs> right. Yeah. It becomes because, a piece of a fantasy art history. Right. And, and that's, that's a, that is, depending on how long an illustrator has been in the, in the business, that is such a rare thing for there to be such a thirsty collector base. Like there are, I've spoken to sci-fi fantasy illustrators that spent, you know, first like 20, 15, 20 years of their career, just doing nothing but book covers. They've got paintings, sitting in an attic they can't right. they, they can't give away right nobody wants that stuff i mean hopefully they might find somebody at ilixcon that might go 500 dollars for this yeah. i have the book sitting in my attic or oh i love this book as a kid oh my god you only won 500 dollars for it like just, yeah just take it it's, it's just <laughs> it's either you take it or it's going to go back to the attic like that's some of that stuff versus knowing that you're creating a, a, a physical object that somebody in the world is going to go. Yeah. And that's they're coming with me. And they're going to pay money for it too. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's it, in the past few years from what I've talked to all the other artists, like it's getting increasingly more feverish. Uh, you know, people are, and I mean, I, I own uh, an original myself of Vulcan, Vulcan Baga, uh, um, but who also, you know, it's between you and Jarrell Threat, uh, you both are, were under Donato and it's like, it's, great to see the the uh the fact he's just got all these great students coming out from from um his his classes and his tutelage it's like it's pretty sweet but back to the point but yeah people will pay a, a lot of money for it and it's 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 got to be a big boon for you to to have that happen well yeah and it's just it's it's one of those things even before even before things started you know selling for 155k um, or whatever it was, whatever the number was. But even before that, I just kind of thought, oh, this is cool that there's an audience out there that is willing to pay 2000 or whatever for the original and, and just take it out of your house. Because like, what am I going to do with a stack of paintings just sitting around? Well, yeah, no, I mean, but at the same time, though, you've got some one that I like uh, only I could have a little more money. I think the, I will have to ask you about the Lilith painting. What what is up with that? Where did that come oh from? God. So that's a whole other. So look, as as an illustrator, I tell my students this, there are going to be times in your life where you're going to try going down different roads. That's like so it's awesome. But what's the story? So I. Um, I was invited by an illustrator named Travis Louie, um, who teaches at the uh, School of Visual Arts 
uh, he does a lot of um, like anthropomorphic characters and like Victorian era suits and things like that, but like all pencil renderings and acrylic and beautiful stuff. But he was curating a show at a gallery called Last Rites Gallery in New York City. So it was like a horror fine arts gallery, right? And so they did a show and I did a, a like a robot zombie painting. Uh, yeah, right? that's it's so that's it's so um it's it's devastatingly violent and sort of sad. <laughs> and I I had a blast working on that. I sculpted a little maquette for it and everything. Yeah, it's so brutal. Um but then the curator was like, oh damn, so you've got some chops. So would you like to be in our next show? And I said, yes, because I'm thinking, all right, well, I'm trying to get this book cover thing going. I'm trying to get uh, more fantasy samples in my portfolio. Um, but in the meantime, I'm working in advertising. I'm still paying my bills with art, but it's not exactly what I want to do. So let me take a detour and try to move into this pop surrealism world, this fine art world and see what happens there, right? And so the first show did okay. Then they asked me to be in this second show with when, where Lilith was. And um, I was like, well, what do you want me to paint? She just said, paint something dark. That was it. They didn't tell anything else to me, paint something dark. And so you, you did it, was it inspired? Because Lilith is, um, it's, uh, isn't the apocryphal? Uh, it's sort of the, the whole story that it was, uh, w she was with Adam before Eve. Is that where that came from? Or Honestly, I don't think I even looked that deeply into it. I think I was, the only reason I titled it Lilith, I mean, this might be like kind of a letdown because I didn't do all kinds of historical research on where the name comes from. I was just a big fan of uh, the TV show Supernatural, and like one of the one of the villains on the show was named Lilith. So I'm like, well, I'll just paint a demon character named Lilith. Really? And okay. So it's like, oh, I want one. Like, <laughs> well, but but at the same time, but, like that's the whole point of the 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 audience gets to put their their own uh, connection to exactly. it. Exactly. I still. Exactly. Whether you know it or not, I mean, you just didn't understand what you were painting. You see, it's right. it's, it's it was really it took me to bring out the the so truth. I wanted I wanted there to be a really disturbing look to her. I wanted her to be like a fallen angel. So she's got the angel wings, but she's got severed limbs. Yeah, severed, severed arms. Um, the chimpanzee mouth for a stomach, and chicken legs, like. And how did you pick those animals? Was it just like, like, uh, sort of like a spin the wheel and see what I you had? Heard? I had sketches for like tumorous tentacles, like coming out of the waist. And then it was just a, it was just a belly. And I'm thinking that's kind of boring, like in my sketch stages. And I'm like, that's boring. So what could I do? Oh, that's what inspired it. Um, that Hall and Oates song, Man Eater. <laughs> that song like, that's I, so I creepy kid, when you were little yeah that is a that is a scary ass song it, it, it if is you, if you play that song for like a little kid and listen and and then look at lilith they're singing about her she only comes out at night mean and hungry right right, <laughs> right. you like, know that's oh so funny God. Oh man, now you mention it like that has it's such a sinister song. It's like and when we you know growing up in the 80s like when you're a little kid and you take everything as like literal. It's, right. And so there's a line in there, "Oh, here she comes. Watch out, boy. She'll, she'll chew, chew you up." up. <laughs> I was like, she's got to have a mouth in her stomach. There you go. Oh, there you wow. You know like that right there makes me want to own it even more. And you know like maybe I'll write write hollow notes and be like this you guys like this is this is what like, you this is this is what you were singing about man this is mm -hmm. you messed up my childhood that would have so been I the, had to put that on a on pan on a, on a painting that would have been the best single cover ever like if that could have been the cover of the single like that I mean like there needs to be a reissue like man eater 2021 yep Nope. On the cover. If I understood how to use Twitter properly, I would just like post it and tag them. But I think they might have nudity 
Um, oh no, Twitter does cool. not have any no. no 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 no. All right, well I don't know. Maybe they, I, <laughs> they um they almost I feel sometimes should have a little bit of a limit. There's literally nothing, and it's like it's sometimes you have to be very careful who you add because if you add the wrong person, all of a sudden you are not safe for work. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So that that went down a uh that I went down a road with that that had it sold i probably would have been asked to do more like that maybe oh, a, a little mini show or something like that but what ended up happening was it was so disturbing that people would take cell phone pictures of it yes and cheese next to it and stuff like that but I would overhear conversations just in at the at the opening people saying that's creepy as you know that's creepy that's super creepy my wife would never let me buy that blah 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 and I'm like oh well damn y'all said paint something dark yeah right I, guess I like, just went too far so I, Noel you know like I, tried, I wanted so bad. <laughs> And I mean, so like, I've, there's you know, like goals. It's, it's. I mean, yes, I, I love that kind of stuff. And in, in, in anybody who's like, well, like if they can't hang it, then I'd be like, get out of here, don't take a picture with it, stay away from it. It's you, you are, you're not worthy of it. That's my thoughts on it. Well, you know, I, I appreciate that. So you know, it's, it's been, it was one of those things that let me know that I'm capable of. A thing but oh yeah i probably shouldn't do that again well no not necessarily yeah. just to just know that if it's like the horror community because and here's the thing that you don't realize this the, there's a horror website that actually did a little devotional to you uh where they put that image in with your mars attacks ones and uh the wolverine picture was just just so devastating um wow. you have a dark horror like you have the 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 things that like horror fans love. You have that you tap you can tap into that, and so you could definitely market to horror for sure. I mean, oh my god, I I never knew that. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Wow. There's yeah, uh, they I mean, were they're talking about you, and uh, and that's and that's sort of like I actually had not realized that I had seen Lilith before, and I didn't realize that it was you who did it, and and so. It was kind of crazy to see that i was just like wow that's him too because it is such a it's such a jump uh yeah. stylistically yeah it, it was fun to do i still got the tentacles i sculpted the tentacles because it's got a little baby skull and all that stuff beyond but but um i i it's i hate to keep you much later because it is sort of late and i will it's let fun. you go but before i do um is there anything that you're doing right now that you would like to talk about uh i know that you are working on a lot of stuff but is there anything that i guess are you allowed to talk about that is upcoming for you um well the children's book will be uh uh wherever books are sold uh april so if you've got a kid that ever felt different or if you ever felt different in school as a kid, that's for you. Um, I've got probably about five or six magic cards waiting to come out. Like the, the, that was the, the bad thing about doing the children's book. It was, a, it was a cool experience, but the bad thing was that I ended up having to say no to magic assignments like five times this year mm. and that that like i felt nauseous after a while like, oh. like i gotta tell this person again like that felt i felt really upset about that because i'm the whole time i'm thinking they're not going to keep asking right good but you know that's they are because i talked to another i've talked to other artists who are in the same boat as you and if they like you they like you and they will continue to reach out they they are in fact it's they understand that you if you are good you're going to be in demand yeah because that was the thing that scared me the most about taking on such a large long-term project is uh not realizing oh uh magic might want me to do something else i never think about that i thought okay well i did something uh, for a couple months and then like time after time i kept having to send off an email saying i'm so sorry but i can't and like my wife will kill me <laughs> like i can't pile on extra stuff but um yeah i'm i'm excited about some of the things that i've just got like sit leaning up against the wall that i can't talk about 
but um, I'm I, I actually have a podcast that oh, yeah? uh, that okay. I'm a part of. Um, what's um, uh, what's it called? It's called Painted in Color. So I'm uh, I have two co-hosts, Lauren Brown and Mia Arajo, uh, who are both uh, amazing illustrators and painters. Um, but we talk a lot about the mental aspects and psychological and emotional aspects of being an illustrator. And I, other than magic right now, I had to say no to a bunch of stuff because um, I have hit that point of burnout where I like, it was, it's, it's a weird thing because I just told you there was a point where I wasn't getting anything and I just painted something for myself. And now I'm at a point where I'm saying, no, I'm turning down work. And it's the floodgates. Weird. It messes with my brain. I'm like, are you crazy? <laughs> like, well, yeah. You know, because but, you have, you spent all those years wanting to be at the point that you're at. And then when, now that you're at that point, you're like, am I being, you know, like, am I sort of, is it an embarrassment of riches kind of thing where I, you know, am I being, you know, am I being corrupted by power? I guess. If, well, if, no, it's like, I'm splitting myself too thin. Like it's, and then you, you say, I say yes to things and then projects start overlapping. And then I end up staying up until like one or two o'clock in the morning. And it's like, it's super unhealthy. And then I hit a point of burnout where I just like realize, oh my God, like I haven't taken time to like hug my kid. Right. Oh gosh. Yeah. You know, like that's the kind, and I never wanted that to ever happen. So I said, all right, for the remainder of the year, I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> so I will start fresh in, in January, but I've got uh, paintings and things like that, that I want to do. I've got um, one of those art proof cards that artist proofs. Yeah. The art, the art backs or the people paint something on the back of the cards. The artist proofs. Yes. I'm, artist I'm, proofs. I'm actually putting together I mean, a, 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 a person that I know are putting together an entire cube made of artist proofs. So we've got 300 we're bringing out and it's, it's, they're, they're really awesome. You guys are so good at this stuff. And um yeah, that's when when will the when will those be out? Uh, I've got I'm doing one, and then somebody asked me to do one of those art cubes. I didn't understand what he was talking about because I'm still so new to this. I'm like, yeah. you want me to paint individual pieces, kind of like those old X Men card sets where Jim Lee would paint a piece of a yep. larger thing. I'm like, you want me to do that? Like, yep. oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, they, they, yes. And there's a, there's, I, I, you know, there's a huge market for that. That's actually a sub market of the art market. It's that artist proofs, like people really like want them. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. But I mean, I've got a bunch of cover stuff, uh, covers for different publishers coming out um, next couple months into next year. Uh, magic cards that are going to come out. Um, but yeah, really just like a lot of the stuff that I'm doing right now, I can't even talk about. <laughs> so, well, that's, that's the kind of stuff you want though, right? That's yeah. That's the, you, you, yeah. It beats saying nothing. <laughs> I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> I don't have anything to do. It's like, do you have something for me to do? Right. I'm placing PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh God. That's so but, sad. After this, I'm going to get on arena. Here's, here's the piece. Here's the little maquette. If you can see it. Oh, yeah. My daughter is mad because this jewel went to like one of her, oh. one of her Halloween costumes or something. And I like glued it in here. Oh no. But like, yeah, this is, I just took this and warped it and it stretched it, but yeah. And painted it with like this gold paint, but like something cheap like this is just enough information to, to use to, to paint from and did you direct her her facial expressions as well i mean she's she i, I said i was gonna let you go but i can't say it's like um she she's like cradling it and has like a look of like tenderness to it it's uh, yeah it's was that was that you directing her or was that just yeah her? i basically yeah i told her like just hold this and give me a little smile and it's so good yeah so that's that's that whole part of being an illustrator. You got to be a director, cinematographer, yeah. concept artist, 
you know. And well, you know, it's not, but not every kid is able to sort of deliver a performance on 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 cue. It's it's you know, it's hit or miss with children, but when they hit it, they hit it. Oh yeah, me and my daughter were like, my kids are both little actors because like we'll we'll do the Candyman scream in the mirror, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, That's you so know what I'm talking cool. about? Yes, I do. And we'll just go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> but they they give me, they ham it up. They give me the expressions. So um, that's fun. That's fun. So I know that she, I, if I ever ask her to pose for something, I know she knows what to do. And what a legacy to leave too. Well, I mean, a lot of, a lot of illustrators that have kids, their, their kids eventually at some point end up in their art. I mean, it, and, how can you not put them in there? Right, right. right. And uh, like for the for the Kaepernick book, when the cover was revealed, I had relatives going, you know, like that's your daughter's face. Like what? <laughs> like like you? That's those are her eyes. Those are her cheeks. And you're like, like hmm. I'm like yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I didn't even deny it. I'm like yeah. Yeah. Like, so. <laughs> I have a beautiful daughter that I and I and I paint for a living. So, you right, know, like a free model. Like I don't have to go hunt down <laughs> right. some random biracial kid and be like, hey, you want to pose for me? Like exactly. Don't have to do any COVID testing. It's all good to go. Just like just stand there and like I'll feed you after. Like <laughs> <laughs> right. Free labor. Yes, oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. Done. I mean, you got to actually I ended up having to pay her. She wanted money. I was like, Oh, you taught her well. Yeah, well, I didn't tell her. Oh, like, it was, exactly. <laughs> I was I was told you you're gonna pay her when. <laughs> so I have to do a I have to do a free school visit too. Like her school is like already scheduled it. So, oh um, wow, you got yeah. a, a little biz, a little entrepreneur. Yes, yeah. So other than other than uh, future magic cards and. Uh, a couple book covers I'm doing, I've got school visits lined up for next year. So, um, which I was surprised by how much those pay. So, well, um, yeah, I mean, like, you know, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. But you know, good for you. Good for you. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's me. That's what I do. Um, uh, to, I know that I, this is, this is such a great, resource for for illustrators and for 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 fans that that collect the that collect magic cards um but uh that's why i was i was thinking when you originally invited me uh to be on this show uh like i haven't i haven't had a lot to, to come out uh, uh for magic that you know i always kind of i kind of felt like well what what could I say? What what could I <laughs> what could I talk about? Well, uh, I, 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 my job is to I, I'm I mean magic is what what is sort of my the, the impetus for starting things. But as I've as I've realized that it's it it cannot be just about that. And a lot of times I get the stories about magic by getting a chance to sort of get the the story of the artists. And so mm -hmm. I mean. Every single one of you all that has been put on those cards, th this is this is. I know that there is a, a an incredible story that has led to this point, and so yeah. you know that's where that's where the joy comes for me. Yeah, and you know, knowing how many people there are in the world that want to do this work, I don't take that for granted when I get that email saying, "Hey, are you available to do this?" Because it's an honor. It's it's if in quite literally for depending on the card that you get and the, or the status you are as an illustrator could be like winning the lottery. So yes, it's, <laughs> yes, it, it's definitely so, got that potential, you know, but it's, I'm, I'm super grateful to, to, to do the work and to be here talking to you. So no, this has been, this has been really cool. Awesome. I, it's been great talking to you. Thank you so much again. Yeah, you're welcome. Right on. Have a good one. Thanks again to Eric for that great chat. What did you all think of my hint for Echo Mage? Hey, cameraman, can we do that echo effect again? Can you make it sound like I just sucked helium? Oh my god, this is great. Okay, now can you make it sound like I'm a Radiohead album? Fitter, happier, trapped, on a pole, a pig in a suit on Tylenol PM. Okay, you can make my voice normal again. Come on. The joke's over. Change it back. Change it back. Change it back or I will scream. I <laughs>